Hello and welcome to Warcraft Daily for today, the 12th of November 2013. So, there has not been many Warcraft Dailies in the last while. It's just because we've been very busy with War Warlords of Drain over the last two weeks. But, um, well, there should be one every day from now on, so it's all good. In today's show, I'm going to cover the um, reasons behind just sort of story, time travel, some talk about account-wide rep and why they're not going to implement it, why there's no races or classes, and then finally a roundup of the blue tweets for the day, most of them all being from Ghostcrawler. So, story and time travel. Well, first, let's have a talk about time travel. So, a lot of people are QQing about time travel, and this was something that they were very quick to clear up in the forums. Basically, Garrosh goes into an alternate universe outland to form his army, and this is probably facilitated by how his friend, as they said, um, who, in my opinion, is probably Kairos, can bend time. Now, I think it's kind of significant that they say bend time. Usually, we just talk about traveling in time, like Caverns of Time style, well, no, the way they say bend essentially means, while it may not be based in actual real-world physics, that's it, it doesn't need to be, it's a fancy game, and when they say bend, I think that's definitely making a differentiation between actual time travel. Yes, he is traveling back in time, but he's also traveling to an alternate universe. Um, essentially, so he goes back to alternate universe Draenor to turn those old orcs into his Iron Horde, and then he's going to get Kairos to realign the Dark Portal in that version, of the world to lead to our dark portal, not only in our part of time, but also in our actual universe, so not their alternate universe, Azeroth. It's a little bit confusing, but I think it does, at least from a point of facilitating a cool story, make sense. Um, this means that it is essentially a current modern story that affects the current, like, day lore, because at the end of the day, if this army does storm through, um, and, you know, they will burn our world and destroy it. So, yeah, it is a full-on woe story, and we definitely know that it's significant because whatever this leads us on to, the Legion will be involved based on what they have been strongly hinting. And um, that the next expansion, they also said specifically that it will follow directly on from this one. Something that I'm very actually excited about. I like the way that expansions will be following on from each other story-wise instead of it being kind of like lore ADHD. You know, you, you went from killing Illidan randomly to killing the Lich King ra randomly instead of all that being one story. I think that if they are going to start keeping the game sort of really compelling, that this might be a cool way to do it. It's certainly different from what they've done in the past. Now, also on the topic of Rathian, they said that he wasn't a throwaway character, as some people were quick to QQ about, because, hey, people are always qu quick to, uh, to rage about things. They said he will return later and be an important part of the story, but for now, we're just going to take a break with him. At the end of the day, you can't have one character being the legendary quest MacGuffin for two expansions in a row, um, and also... He just doesn't factor into this story, at least initially. I could see perhaps at the end with the uh, maybe the Legion returning, maybe a really Interulion returning, because I think they, they sort of did hint that they will be returning next expansion. With all those things happening, then there will be time for Rathian to be relevant. Right now, it's a different story. Now, they also talked about how we're getting a lot of Draenei lore, and this is a good thing, in my opinion, because I play a Draenei, and honestly, we've got so little lore for this race that it's kind of silly. And honestly, it's a cool race. They came from space. They are, you know, Kil'jaeden and Archimond are, um, are essentially, like, they're all the same species, just that one side is sort of twisted. They have spaceships. The whole narrow thing is cool. They've got cool architecture. They've got some pretty cool characters that haven't really been fleshed out that well in-game. So overall, I think I'm, I'm really pumped about getting new Draenei lore. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably do, like, a full-on lore video on the Drain Eye someday, because I just think they're, they're really cool. Anyway, finally, on the topic of having a little bit more gender balance in the story, they confirmed that there will be representation for both genders in terms of strong characters in the next expansion. This was basically, um, someone noticed that, hey, this trailer is all a bunch of dudes. Well... They are the Orc War Chiefs, you can't just go back and retcon. Well, I mean, okay, they can go back and retcon, but... Perhaps that doesn't make as much sense. Still, I, I wouldn't be worried about this. They've at least recently done quite a good job of having strong female characters. Actually, and they've really, they've done that the whole time, even if you think back in, like, Warcraft 3, I may have Shadow Shadow Song and stuff like that. They do have badass female characters, it's good that that's a thing. It's a little bit more mature than, say, something. Speaking of immature representation of, uh, of women, you should take a look at the Battlefield 4 advert for Axe. It's essentially Link's deodorant in America or whatever. It is the most cringy, dis uh, terrible thing on the planet, so go watch that if you want to have a laugh. But anyway, yeah, I think they'll do a good job. Right now, basically, I don't think they should really retcon who the old, like, Rand, Black Hand, etc. were in terms of gender, but they should be able to work in new characters. Don't be worried about it. It's fine. 
Um, also, for um, the next topic, we're going to talk about account-wide rep. And this was also, with new expansion coming out, I think there's probably a lot of people renewed about asking questions about things like that and systems they want implemented. So, this is an interesting one. And with making various systems and things account-wide, it's very convenient and time-saving, but it does have the downside of reducing character attachment and uh, the meaning of your actions for your individual characters. That's true. At the end of the day, if um, the only thing that differentiates your characters is their class and gear that you have on them, then they're not really characters at the end of the day. Like, they're... Yeah, like, it's sort of everything that, like, it takes away from what a character is if it sort of already just appears into the world with all these things. Like, at the end of the day, why should you be exalted with a faction who have never met you before? I suppose that's their reasoning. So, um, yes, they said that despite some players' intent to reduce the game to its core systems, they still do hold that it should be an immersive role-playing game. Um, and I think that actually, in a lot of ways, everyone is right in this situation. Personally, I am against the count-wide rep, and that's... I don't know if this is really a new opinion, but it's just what I kind of think at the minute. And the reason for this is because I don't think the problem is reputation. The problem is how reputation has been handled in the game. Um, it's more like the way that Mr. Pandaria handled rep. They handled rep by giving you ridiculous amounts of daily quests. That wasn't fun to anyone. And um, I think that's really why this became a problem. It wasn't a massive problem beforehand. So my opinion, as long as reputation is the sort of thing where it involves, I don't know, it, fun stuff that isn't dailies, i.e. the new sort of end game solo PV content that they're trying to implement, then it's good. I'd also be happy with perhaps your first... Um, your first few dungeons, like, right now, you know, maybe your first few dungeons a day give you some rep, but I wouldn't have it the Cataclysm way. I think the Cataclysm way was, it's a sort of thing where a lot of people will say it was handy, and they just want the tabard system back, but what I can definitely say is from a game design perspective, you don't know what you want, and you will burn yourself out. At the end of the day, if the best way to get, um, to get your rep up is just to sit in Stormwind and queue dungeons, then it... Uh, like, in terms of making it a fun role-playing game, they have failed their basic design. And then you're just turning the game into a bunch of menus, and I think that's terrible. I think, like, if you go, say, back in Wrath of the Lich King, a lot of factions have very, like, different, unique dailies, and they weren't all mandatory to do at once. And because of this and the mixture of just the way they designed the dailies, each faction felt really unique. Now, I don't want dailies to be back, but I want, say, however many factions there are at max level, Give them really unique things, like say if there was a, maybe an orc clan that are friendly to both factions, like the Alliance and the Horde. Well, perhaps give them a really fun and interesting sort of um, uh, rep experience, I guess. Maybe they're at war with some local force or something like that, and you get rep by helping out the war effort and uh, like contributing to dynamic events, picking up treasures. Maybe there are one or two daily quests. I think one or two dailies are okay, but... Yeah, just they need to keep things more varied, keep the gameplay varied. Because at the end of the day, a daily for one faction is, in many cases, the same as the daily for another faction. So unless the dailies are all very unique, then it's not going to work. That's why they, I think they can do a better job making unique um, dynamic content than they can making unique dailies. Oh, that was probably a very long and roundabout way of covering it. Anyway, let's continue. On the topic of there being no new race or class. Basically, for races, they said that redoing the old races is a humongous amount of work. And, uh, I'd say this is actually true. Now, hold on, we need to think about it. So perhaps there is less concepting for a new race than there is, or sorry, for one of the revamps than there is for a new race, but they still need to make, texture, and animate every single model as if they were a new race. At the end of the day, the old models are 100% useless, they have no well-rigged animations or anything like that, they have a low poly count, and um, they can't just smack on new high-resolution textures onto an old model and call it a day. I think a lot of people that play World of Warcraft, and obviously not everyone has to have technical, you know, know-how about this sort of thing, a lot of people don't understand how games are made, and they don't really understand how, like, say, a model for a character is made. It's a lot more than just drawing the guy out. And they are Now, of course, in um, combination with this, they're also having new sound assets for every single race, in terms of just, like, higher quality footsteps, higher quality everything. There is quite a lot of work. And uh, I think... Personally, while new races would have been nice, and I really would have liked Ethereals as a neutral race or something like that, I don't think any of them really made sense in this expansion apart from, say, 
uh, ogres. Ogres, of course, would make perfect sense. Maybe in Hex expansion we'll get Ethereals or something if it is Legion based. I don't know. But, um, yeah, whatever. Now, also, as far as classes go, they said that they don't want World of Warcraft to be a game that has, like, 50 million classes, because at the end of the day, that's just so much shit. Um, a new class means new learning for everyone, and it shakes up the class landscape completely. Right now, they feel the monks are the, sort of, they're, like, they're still quite recent feeling, and personally, I think they are sort of new feeling, and the class landscape does feel quite good. For the designers and players, they're keen on having two expansions in a row that have the same kind of class and talent system, so that everything can be refined. Honestly, I think that this is kind of okay. Right now, I'm personally, I'm quite happy with the different classes. I think a Demon Hunter will probably be the next hero class in the next expansion, because it's probably going to be Legion-based. Um, but as for right now, I'm happy enough. If they can just, like, stop batting down the hatches and try to make every single class feel really good and refined, um, I think this is a good thing. Also, for those of you who are saying to PvP, you probably don't want another class because class balance in PvP is still not perfect and they need more work and if they just have one other solid expansion without having to worry about a whole new ability set and things like that, then perhaps the landscape in terms of balance will get better because there's less things that are sort of popping in and shaking it up. So yeah, there's that. Now, next, let's talk about blue tweets. So, Ghostcrawler said that other types of PvE content that are not faction or daily based are possible but not trivial to design. Well, I think, yeah, that's true, but at the end of the day, not trivial to design is completely irrelevant. It's, is it fun? If it's fun, then it's worth designing. Therefore, you need to get around whatever obstacles are making it non-trivial. Uh, so, yeah, I know it's a bit of the har harsh way to look at it, but it's definitely the truth when you're asking for money. I think that right now, the dynamic content system with uh, cool events and treasures and things like, things like that has a great deal of potential. Of course, we have not seen it to anywhere near its fullest extent. The Timeless Isles is, in my opinion, still a prototype. So, yeah, I think that the whole endgame situation will still be a lot more varied than it has been in the past. And uh, hopefully a lot of people will, ha will have fun. The only thing I'd worry about is that there won't be enough, like, of a framework around it all. And therefore, people will just think, oh, well... I get like 5 rep from killing one of these mobs anyway, so how about I just grind mobs instead of doing the cool daily events or the cool dynamic thing. It's just hard to design around, but I think they'll find a way of making it all work. So next, with tank swaps, Ghostcrawler said that they are a tool, and the reason that they are, I guess, such a widely used tool is because they want to have more single boss fights. With a single boss fight, one of the nice things is they can really just concentrate on the mechanics of that boss. Sometimes when they're adding in loads of different adds, uh, I suppose it all translates into there just being a lot of noise. And when I say noise, I just mean there's so much going on on the screen at once, you don't really know what's happening. In a lot of cases, it would be better just to have one boss that's really solid with really fun and polished mechanics, and they still are going to ask you to bring two tanks to your raid, because then, you know, if there are, if there are ads in a boss, well, you can't really do that if you only have one tank. So there still needs to be two tanks in a raid, therefore they need to implement something like a tank swap. And the reason that the damage soaking mechanic is gone really is because a lot of tanks didn't like it and they weren't finding it fun. Therefore, I think this is probably the best option for now. At the end of the day, though, I'd, I'd really like there to be more sort of tank swap. Not tank swap mechanics, but at least tanking mechanics that, uh, that make it fun to tank a single boss with two tanks. Now, next of all, and finally, they said um, Old War style heroic modes are probably not going to return because it was hard to come up with a good reason for there to be a button. And while it was cool in Old War to have the button thing, and I'll admit I really found that fun, I guess there is a little bit of a semblance of sense. It's like, by having there be a button all the time, it's as if every single boss has a ridiculously easy to find weakness that's as simple as hitting the OMG make it harder button. You know, like, or something like that. Essentially, yeah, they have to come up with loads and loads and loads of different contrived reasons for there to be a button, and at the end of the day, that just doesn't particularly make a lot of sense in some regards. Anyway, that's it for Warcraft Daily for today. Um, as always, if you want to, uh, if you have any responses, leave them in the comments. Please like and subscribe to keep the show going, and I'll see you all next time.